Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, we're going to take a look at Chart.js, which is a JavaScript library for creating really nice looking charts in your browser. Bar charts, pie charts, I think there's eight different types that you can create. And this tutorial is going to be very beginner friendly, so even if you're not a JavaScript pro, you should be able to follow along really easily uh, and create your own charts. So Chart.js is, is pretty similar to D3, which is a data visualization library. I did a series on D3 about two years ago and I find Chart.js to be much easier to work with. I don't think it's as advanced and as in-depth, uh, but it is very simple to work with, at least on a, a basic level. Uh, now there is a lot you can do, but we're going to be just scratching the surface. If you do like what you see, I'd suggest going through the documentation and looking at some of the more advanced stuff. But what we're going to be doing is creating a chart that shows you the top five or six cities in Massachusetts uh, by population. Okay, and I'm going to show you how we can create a bar chart and then easily convert it to other types of charts uh, if we want. Okay, so we'll look at the basics. We'll look at some of the options that we can use and um, yeah, we'll get going. So we're going to go ahead and click get started here. And this is the documentation, which is pretty nice. It shows you the basics of creating a simple chart. Um, I'm going to click on installation and it shows you the different methods you can use. You can install it using NPM if you want to use Node.js. Um, you can use Bower, which is a front end package manager, but we're going to go the simple route and use the CDN, okay, which is just a remote link to the chart.js file. And of course, you can download it and include it in your local structure as well. So I'm going to go ahead and open Atom, which is the text editor I'm using, and we're going to create a folder to work in. So I'll go to add project folder and I'm going to create this in my projects folder. And let's just create a new folder called my chart. OK, we'll open that up and I'm just going to create an index HTML file here. All right, and let's add some basic HTML tags. I'm using Emmet, so I just did the uh, exclamation mark and then tab and it gives us this basic file structure. And then for the title, let's just say my chart.js chart. And we want to bring in that CDN. So let's put in our script tags and we want to bring in for the source. Let's go ahead and grab. Uh, I'm going to grab the minified version here, so we'll copy that and let's paste that in. And then I'm also going to grab bootstrap as well. All right, so we'll just grab the bootstrap CDN. Basically just for the container and just in case you want to add some styles later. So we'll go ahead and grab the CSS for bootstrap and let's put that right here. So we'll paste that in. All right. So now we have chart JS included. Now what we want to do is go into our body and I'm just going to create a div with the class of container. And then in here we need an element to insert our chart. OK, and you're going to use the canvas element, which is an HTML HTML5 element. OK, and all we need to do is give this an ID. So we'll give it an ID of my chart. All right. And that's where our chart's going to go. Everything else we're going to do is going to be in JavaScript. So let's create our script tags here. And then we need to create a variable for our chart. Whoops, that's a B, that should be let. I'm using ES6 let you can use var if you want. Uh, and then we're going to set that to document dot get element by D. And we want to get the element that has the ID of my chart. And then when you use when you use um, canvas, you want to get a context so we can do dot get context and we want a 2D context. OK, so this is what we're going to use now to create our chart. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and then I'm going to open this up. I'm going to use something called Atom Live Server. If you want that plugin, you can just go to settings, install and search for Atom Live Server. Click on packages and you can download this first one here and install it. All right. Once you do that, you can go to packages, Atom Live Server, start server and that'll open it up. OK, it's going to open up that that index HTML file. And if we look at our source code here, uh, actually, let's do a control U. 
you can see that we have our script and then down here this this is just stuff that's included by live server so you can ignore that okay now uh, let's reload get rid of that message now what we want to do is we want to create a, a new object okay and we want to use this my chart element in that object so let's go down here and let's say uh, let and I'm just going to call this bar chart okay and we want to set it to a new chart object and then we want to insert that my chart element okay actually it's not call this bar chart because I want to be able to change it's not going to make sense if we change it to a pie chart so let's call this um, we'll call it mass pop chart because it's going to be the population of the the top uh, the top cities in Massachusetts and then this is going to have a second parameter which will be an object and this is where all of our stuff goes all the properties the data everything so the first thing we want in here is the type of chart that we want it to be which is going to be a bar chart all right we'll put a comma and then i'm just going to put inside co a comment here the different types we can have so we can have bar we can have a horizontal bar we can have pie line uh, donut radar and polar area okay uh, i think that's it if you guys know of any others let me know and then under the type we're going to have data which is going to be an object and then we're going to have options uh, which is also going to be an object all right now inside the data we want to have a couple things so one is going to be labels okay and the labels is going to be an array and then we want the data set or data sets which is an array and we can have more than one uh, and then let's see I think that's all we need for now now for the labels in our case we're doing the the uh, the top cities in Massachusetts so that's what we want to use for the labels so let's go back to Chrome and I'm just gonna search for uh, Massachusetts city populations and I'm going to click on this first link here which is from togetherweteach.com and it just gives us the city name and then the population so we're going to grab like the first five or six here all right and you don't have to do Massachusetts populations you can you, you can use whatever data set you want which is really nice and there's all types of ways to do it so uh, what we'll do is for the labels we're going to put those city names. So let's say Boston and let's do uh, Worcester. Okay, it's not. And for you guys, you people that aren't from Massachusetts, it's not Worcester, it's not Worcester, it's Worcester. We do have some very strange uh, pronounce, pronunciations for city names. Uh, let's say Springfield, Lowell. And Cambridge and New Bedford. Okay, so those are the labels. And then inside data sets, um, this is going to be an array of objects. Now you can have more than one data set. We're just going to have one, though. It's going to have a label of population. All right, and then it's also going to have the actual data. And in this case, it's going to be an array of population numbers okay which we could get from that website but I'm just gonna paste them in just to save some time all right so it's just a simple array of numbers so let's go ahead and save that and go to our web page and that's what we get okay so just from the labels and the numbers it gives us this really nice looking chart we didn't have to add any styles or anything now we can customize this in a lot of different ways. So one thing you're probably going to want to do is give these colors. And look, if I if I hover over it, we get these nice tool tips with a little bit of animation. So to change the background color, we can go and go right after the data array, put a comma, and we can say background color. And let's say you want to make it green. Okay, so if we save that, we take a look you'll see that now they're green. Now, in, in many cases, you may want to have different colors for each one. 
And we can do that by in, instead of putting in one value here, we can put an array. So I'm just going to comment that out just so you guys know that you can do that. And then we'll say background color and we're going to set it to an array. Okay, now you can use color names, you can use um, hexadecimal colors or you can use RGBA values, which is what I'm going to use. So I'm going to paste in a bunch of different RGBA values okay, for different colors. And then what it'll do, it'll it'll start with the first one, apply this one. This one will be this color and so on. So if we save that and go back, now you can see each one has a different color. And then we have other properties that we can we can add as well. So let's say after the background color array, let's say we want border width and we could put border width for uh, let's say border color. And for border color, we'll just do a gray and we'll use a hexadecimal value. So let's see what that gives us. And now you can see it has a, a four pixel border with a, a gray color. All right. But I'm going to actually change the border width to one because that's too thick. And then if we want, we can also do hover border width and let's set that to black and we can say hover. Oops, that shouldn't be black. That should be, let's say, three. And then we can do hover border color and we'll set that to black. OK, so now if we go and we hover over it, you'll see the border changes in color and width. And there's a lot. There's other properties as well. If you go to the documentation, you can see all that stuff. But I just wanted to give you some examples. Now, there's also global properties and gl or global options that we can apply. So if we were to go right here and we can take actually let's put a comment here we'll say global options and we can take the chart object and we can say dot defaults dot global and let's say we want default font family and let's set that to Lado or Lado I don't know how it's pronounced and then we can also change for instance the font size so we'll say default font size and let's change that to 18. Actually, this should have these should have semicolons, not commas. And then let's change the color. We'll say font color and we'll say we'll set that to uh, a light gray. All right. So if we save that. Uh, oops, what happened here? Unexpected token. This, these should actually be equal signs. Sorry about that. And there we go. So now you can see all of the font is the same size and same color. And I'm going to show you how we can target different sections as well. All right. So let's move on to the options uh, down here. OK, so this options object, let's say that uh, we want to add a title to this chart. So in options, we can say title, set that to an object and set display to true. And then we can set the text of the title. So I'll say largest cities in Massachusetts save that and go back and now you'll see that we have the title up at the top and it's nicely formatted by default. If we wanted to change the font size, which by default is 18 because that's what we set for the global um, font size, but we can change that here and let's say font size 25. And now you can see that the title is larger than the rest of the text. We can also target the legend, which is this right here. So if we go and we put a comma after title and say legend, same thing, that's going to be an object. And let's say we wanted to position it to the right. Actually, that should be in quotes. OK, we can do top, bottom, left, right. So if we were to do that, you'll see that it now moves over to the right. Uh, let's see. Another thing we could do is change the color now inside the legend we also have an object called labels and we can set that font color let's set that to black and now 
you can see the population here and if we click it it actually we can cross we can um, enable and disable it but you can see the color is black okay it oh it overwrote the rest of the the global values now in this case since we only have one data set it doesn't make much sense to have this uh, if, if this was a pie chart it would and I'll show you why but um, if we wanted to not show that we could just say for a legend we could say display false okay and now we save it now you can see it's gone all right so another thing we can target in options is the the, the entire layout so if we go layout and we could set like padding we could set a, a, a single value which would add padding to all sides but we can also set it to an object and we can say for instance left we'll say 50 right 0 uh, bottom 0 and top 0 okay and that'll push it over to the left 50 Okay, so now you can see that it's over 50 pixels to the left. And then we can also target the tooltips. You see how we have the tooltips when we hover over. Let's say we don't want to show those. We could go under layout and say tooltips and set display to false. All right, and now if we go back, you'll see that. Oops, that didn't work. Oh, it's not display, it's enabled. Okay, and now you'll see we don't have the tooltips. I like them, so I'm gonna keep that at true. Okay, and there's other options as well. Like I said, if you want to really look into it, you can check out the documentation. I'm just trying to give you some examples of some of the, you know, the um, more common things that you would look at and change. Okay, so uh, let's see, the last thing I'm gonna do is just show you the different types we have here. So let's change this to a pie chart. All we have to do is literally just change the type and then I'm also going to just change the legend to display true because now it makes sense. Let's save and there we go and you'll see the legend now has each city with its its um, specific color and we can see it in the graph. We also have uh, tool tips which will show us the, the population and the city name. All right, so just imagine what you could do here with, with different data sets. And you don't have to create your own data sets. You can use APIs that can look up, you know, statistics and, and, and data sets on really unlimited things out there. Uh, and you can bring that in. You can make an AJAX request, bring that data in, and then display it in a chart, which is really nice. All right, let's take a look at, uh, let's see, we'll look at horizontal bar. And there we go. So there's a horizontal bar and it's really nice. You can just change the type and you don't have to do anything else. Now, there are some options that only pertain to certain types of charts. Uh, but like I said, you can check out the documentation for that. So let's see what else we have here. A line chart. So that would be a line chart. You see, it starts at Boston and it just gives you the different points. You can hover over the points. Uh, let's see, you can do a, a donut chart, which is kind of like a pie chart, it just has a hole in it. And you can do a radar chart, which is pretty cool looking. All right, so I don't want to get too deep into this. Let me just change that back to bar. I'm going to make this code available in the description. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this and maybe you can find a, a reason to use this in your own projects. Um, it, it's really nice looking. There's no CS, special CSS that you have to, you know, um, you have to add yourself or anything. It just looks really nice right off the bat. So thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, please leave a like, please subscribe. Whatever you can do is great, and I will see you in the next one.